Hey guys, it's Nina from One End Agency, and today we're going to talk about budgeting and expenses. Just a little bit, I'm gonna give you some tips. So I'm on Facebook and I'm on Instagram, hey guys. So when you are just joining me and tuning in, I would love for you to share uh, where you're tuning in from. I love to know that, um, and I'm so excited to know that we've been getting people tuning into my Facebook lives and Instagram lives from all over the world. And that is because that you guys have been so awesome in sharing my videos. So um, we're gonna talk about, uh, so this is for salon owners and also independent artists. And I get this a lot. Hey, Holly. Hey, Tabitha. Hey, guys. Hey, Sharon. Um, hey, Josh. So welcome. Thank you guys for tuning in. I want to talk about budgeting, and I'm going to just give you some tips on how you can budget a little bit better, what some of the benchmarks are, and where salon owners are typically overspending. So please tell me where you're tuning in from. Also share this video and tag a friend or a fellow salon owner or independent artist chair renter that you feel would benefit from this business. Before I get started, I'm gonna uh, tell you guys who I am. You know, a lot of you do know who I am, but for you those, for those who don't know who I am, um, again, my name is Nina and I'm a former salon owner and uh, stylist. I've been in the business. This is actually my 22nd year in this business. I love this business. I love and am very passionate about the industry and also growing people. So back in 2016, I ended up selling my hair salon and moving to Connecticut with my husband and uh, decided to dedicate 150% of my time to coaching and consulting awesome salon owners and stylists just like you guys. So I wanted to talk about this because you guys have been so great and sending me messages through email, through Facebook. If you ever have a topic or anything that you want me to talk about, please feel free to send me a shout and I will uh, always incorporate that into my schedule. But I want to talk about this because this is so incredibly important and I see this so often, especially with salon owners that I'm working one on one with. There is one particular area that salon owners, independent artists are spending the most money Money. Can you guys guess where it is? So start and send me in the comment section where you think that salon owners and independent artists are spending the most money every single month. I would love to hear what you think before we get into it. And um, this is important for you to understand your benchmarks and understand where you should be, where you are, and also tracking your revenue every single month and then also tracking your expenses. So I'm going to give you two tips. And I'm also gonna give you an extra tip if we have some uh, stylists that are thinking about opening their own salon business because uh, this is very, very important for you guys to truly understand when you're just getting into your own salon uh, where you should be targeted for your rent every single month. So um, we have some answers here. So let me see what we have. So Carl is saying most money on marketing, very good. Um, Good choice, Tabitha advertising. Samantha is say, um, saying retail that doesn't sell. Very good, all good stuff. Andrew's saying back bar and color, so yes. Um, hey Erica, so yes, this is where, and you guys, um, Andrew and Samantha combined ended up choosing the right answer, answer, but yes. So salon owners typically are spending way more than necessary on their retail purchases every single month. And depending on how you order, some salons order every week, some order every two, and some order every month, whatever works best for you and your brand. I ordered every week because that's what worked best for me. But also, um, Andrew was saying it right too, back bar and color. So retail, back bar and color, hands down, or where salon owners and even independent artists are spending the most money. And it's so easy, right? It's so easy to overspend. I am guilty of this, you know, there for a while I was overspending on my retail because guess what? I never wanted to run out of anything. I never wanted to have a situation where my stylists were going to sell something or they were going to mix color or a lightener and we didn't have anything. So I was like, over the top about it so I did start ordering every week of course my expenses went up a little bit because every time you order you're being billed a shipping fee right so but I just wrap that into my expenses I would rather have that than not have any product so you have to do and decide what you feel is best for your business hey Vicki hey guys um, so 
Let me tell you this. So let's first start off with um, retail. So retail purchases, obviously you're keeping track of what your retail purchases are every single day, every single week, and every single month. So the benchmark for your retail and what you should be spending is actually 52% of the revenue you're bringing in just in retail sales. So let me just repeat that for you. So the benchmark, so what you should be budgeted for is 52% of what you sold either the prior week, you know, two weeks or month, depending on how often you're ordering, you're actually only going to reorder 52% of what your total sales were just for retail. So for instance, you know, if you, um, if you sold a thousand dollars in retail in a week and you're ordering per week, um, 52%, so 50% of that would be $500. And then if you're adding an additional 2% to that, I'm going to do my math here. So what is that? Um, 1%, I don't know. I should have had my numbers written down and I didn't. Um, so an extra 2% of that. So you're going to be ordering, um, say $620. I'm going to just throw that out there for you guys. 520. Thanks, Carl. Thank you very much. So yes. So 52% of that thousand dollars would be $520. Thanks to Carl for being my little calculator on the other end of this. So what you want to do is you want to plan that out. So you should already know if you're ordering monthly, you already know what you brought in in revenue for retail. Um, you now you're going to break down that budget and say, okay, 52% of this is actually what I'm going to be ordering. And that's it. Now I understand, you know, some things may run low and all of that, but here's another tip. Every three months you should be running a complete inventory. So you should be doing inventory every month, but you should be running a, a complete inventory on your quantity levels. So you understand exactly on average what you're, what you're spending and what is going out on average so you know what to keep on hand for your retail products. So, you know, say on a three-month average, one of your hot items, let's just say a Joyco hairspray. I'm just using things here. Hey, Alexander. Um, so that Joyco hairspray, on average, you are selling six of those per month. That means that you should have six of them on your shelf on on hand quantity to order, right? Not nine or eight because now you're having all of these extras sit on the shelf. So that's why every three months you want to run through that complete inventory and see what your averages are that you're selling so you know exactly what to keep on your shelf and then you adjust those quantities. So in a three month period, if those Joyco hairsprays went from you selling on average in a salon from six to three, now you're going to adjust that on hand quantity to three. So you don't keep ordering six and now three are just sitting on the shelf consistently. So this is how, how we get all of this inventory, retail inventory that's sitting on our shelves. It's money that is sitting on the shelf, right? That money could be utilized in other areas of your business. So I want you to really pay attention to that. Okay. Very, very important. Now let's talk about consumables. So back bar, color, um, foils, all of that stuff wrapped into one. So if you would like to run on a 20% profit or more, you should not be spending more than 6% of your total service sale revenue, either per week, per month, however you're ordering. So yes, Andrew was saying between six and 10%, all depends on what kind of profit mar margin you wanna run on. Um, my salon was shooting and ran off of a 20% profit at, at times, sometimes a 23% profit, it all depends. Sometimes it would go to a 17% profit, that, that's where we fluctuated. And so if that's what you're shooting for, which is what, when I'm coaching my salon owners and stylists, that's what I want them to shoot for, then we wanna make sure that we stay as close to that 6% as possible. So for instance, so Carl, I hope you're still here because I'm gonna need your calculator skills. So for instance, if you are bringing in you know, say you're bringing in $10,000 in revenue for, um, for that entire month, if you're ordering on a monthly basis, you know, what you're gonna do is 6% of that $10,000 $10, is what you're gonna be ordering on consumables, back bar, color, and things like that. That's it. 
So every single month going into it, you should already know what your prior numbers are because you're going to know what you already brought in in revenue, right? So now you know I only get 6% of that number, so I get $600. Thanks, Carl. Again, you're awesome. So I get $600 to spend if you're bringing in $10,000 a month, just throwing that number out there. And I want you guys to know that you have to try to really, really stick to those benchmarks and those goals. It's very, very important if you want to start to throw a profit. So these are the two areas where salon owners overspend. And believe me, I get it because I know you want to have product on your shelf, but there are ways to eliminate where you're not just using a tube of color and then replenishing it and use, you know, selling a bottle of shampoo and replenishing it. There's systems in place there that you have, you know, especially going over your quantities in terms of your color order, just like we went over the quantities and doing the average for our retail. You know, you're gonna go over what you're using. It's very seasonal. So obviously during the fall and the winter months, you're gonna be using typically more of your darker colors. So you're gonna to need to up those on hand quantities. And then in the spring and the summer, you're gonna be using a lot of those, you know, seven and up, seven, eight, nine, ten, a lot of lightener. We would go through so much lightener during the spring and the summertime. It was crazy. I would have to double my quantity. So you have to be very in tune with the seasonality of your business, but also understanding that you have to stick to a budget. You can't just go on a whim and you know say, okay, well, I'm out of this and I need this, and I'll tell you guys really what gets people in trouble is making those runs to the beauty supply every single week or every time you run out of something. That's where you start really overspending too because, and I know you guys can relate to this because I've been there too, I stopped doing that because I was overspending. It's like going in, it's like a kid in a candy store. Oh, they have new brushes. Oh, they have new lightener. Oh, I'll buy this. And then all of a sudden you just blew $200 over your budget. Every single dollar counts when you're a business owner, especially when you're a business owner with a team and you're, you're a commissioned business because every single dollar counts because that's getting all wrapped into your profit margins and your revenue. And then also when you're an independent artist and a chair renter as well, every dollar counts. You have to be very aware of what is coming in and what is going out. So here is my, um, thanks Josh. Um, so here is my extra tip for you guys. And this is for um, salon owners that are already in existence, right? But also for stylists that are thinking of becoming salon owners, um, this is a this is a really really big tip, and not everybody knows this. But this is the way that I was taught to run my business by my mentors. Um, we also go through this. There's a whole profitability guide on one of my online courses for my salon owner school of business. It lists everything out in terms of what percentage you should be for your marketing, your advertising, your credit card fees, your retail, your consumables, your electric bills, everything is um, outlined in percentage, but the biggest, biggest percentage of all is your rent. So what I wanna tell you guys, and you, know, you, can, you can't really control your rent once you're a salon owner because it's a fixed cost. The only way that you can offset it is if you increase your revenue, right? So there are ways to offset that. If you get into this and you feel like your rent is a little bit too high, you can offset it by growing the business. But before you guys even get into this and get into getting a business, I want you to really pay attention to this um, tip that I'm gonna give you. So again, if you're wanting to run off of at least a 20% profit, which I want you to, your rent should be no more than 8% of your total revenue, okay? Now you may be able to squeeze it to 10%, but if you're going those extra 2% on your rent, you're gonna have to cut back 2% somewhere else within your budget. So I have seen salon, new salon owners that have been going into business, getting into a 15 to 17% rent going into this. Oh my gosh, it breaks me because I know how hard this business is and I understand the hustle that it takes to grow a successful business. And when you're already going in eight, nine points higher, percentages higher than you should be where your rent, you're highly cutting into your profit margins. So what you would do is you would look at what your, um, you know, you're gonna have a business plan that's all laid out. It's gonna show your projected uh, revenue for two years. And you wanna know where you have to be based on that 8% rent and what you have to bring in in revenue 
to showcase an 8% rent. Like I said, you can probably squeeze a 10%. I'm on the, like, err on the side of caution. You know, every percentage counts in this business. So what I want you guys to do is if you're thinking about it, you know, if you're thinking about getting into business, calculate what that rent would be on an 8% in um, conjunction to your revenue of your business, your projected revenue. My salon owners and independent artists that are already in business, you can calculate this and see what you're bringing in in revenue and um, in comparison to what would give you an 8% rent. And then it's gonna show you, you know, where you lie and where you are. And then all you have to do is say, okay, if I'm doing $20,000 a month and I'm at a 10% rent, then I need to do $22,000 a rent or $25,000, um, I'm sorry, in revenue to get me to be at an 8% rent. So when you're already in it, the only thing that you can do is grow the business and create more revenue for your business. But guys, I'm telling you, I've been so fortunate to have mentors that showed me how to uh, build this business with, with this profit margin in place and starting it with the foundation of, of being at that 8% rent. It is totally, totally life-changing. So um, talking about the retail, so I'm going to recap quickly for you. I know it's Friday. You guys are all probably really busy in the salon, but this is very important stuff. So retail, your benchmark sh for that should be 52% of your total revenue for your retail sales, whether you're ordering per week, every, you know, every other week or um, every month, again, doing what you feel is best for your business and your brand. And then also for your consumables, your color, your back bar, 6% is your benchmark really try to stick to that avoid uh hitting up the um you know your distributors and your your vendors and getting out there and, and going on a whim because you need stuff really try to have that budget in place so spending no more than six percent of your total revenue in service sales per week or bi-weekly or monthly however you're ordering and then getting in hey rose and then getting in on that eight percent rent i would love for you guys to figure out where you need to be um, once you get that rent in line with that 8%, then everything else can kind of fall in place. So that's why this is so important. This is really a good foundation for you guys, um, especially if you're just getting into business. So I wanted to share these tips with you guys. I hope that you're having an awesome, awesome Friday. And um, please check me out on my website, oneandagency.com. Of course, my dogs are barking. They never really bark unless I'm on my Facebook or Instagram live. Um, so check out my website. Be sure to check out some of the online courses that I have. I have one for stylists and I also have one for salon owners. And um, I'm just rounding up my, um, my on the road tour for my business and beauty workshops. But I have something really exciting. I have two things really exciting for 2019 that I'm not yet announcing, but one of them will actually include um, doing a workshop for independent artists, talking all about pricing, how to price yourself, how to increase your prices. We're gonna talk about um, social media stuff and just really expenses, budgeting, all of that stuff. So I'm gonna be working on that when I go on the road for 2019. So again, share this video or tag someone that you feel would be a benefit to this. And I thank you guys so, so much for all of your support and for tuning in. Thank you so much. And I hope you have a good rest of your day. Bye guys. See you later.